Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and welcome to another fabulous episode of Forge Talks. As always, I'm absolutely thrilled that you could join us today. Here at Forge Rock, we're very proud of our powerful and comprehensive platform. It's absolutely stacked with features and functionalities to solve even the most complex identity use case. My guest today, I would say, is reasonably familiar with the Forge Rock platform. None other than Forge Rock's VP of Product Management, Mary Ritz. Mary, welcome to Forge Talks. Hey, thanks for having me. Yes, it's a pleasure to have you. And um, yeah, it's probably it's probably fair to say that you're, um, you know, reasonably familiar with the Forge Rock platform, right? Yeah, I think it's safe to say that. Yeah, I, I mean, there's there's a few nicknames that float around Forge Rock for you, like uh, uh, you know, Queen of Queen of the Trees, or <laughs> Mary Mary. Quite contrary, how does your intelligent access trees grow? You know that kind of. I hadn't heard that one. <laughs> That's a good. One. We're all using it um, <laughs> behind your back, <laughs> uh, but. Give us a little introduction, if you will, to our plan for this uh, this and the next episode that we have together. Fraser, I've thought about a good way to do this. So if you take a trip to Paris, there's always the top things you need to see. Eiffel mm -hmm. Tower, Notre Dame, the Louvre. Um, and then there's the, the locals tour. Today, we're going to do the top things. So the top features, the flagship distinctive features about Forge Rock. And then so presumably in the next episode, we can look forward to the locals tour of the Forge Rock platform. Absolutely. All right, well, I reckon we should just get straight into it. Let's, let's take a crack at this list. In at number one, intelligent access trees. Trees is our number one most differentiated and sought after feature. It's, it's how you would, um, it's orchestration and decision engine, and it's how you design how someone's gonna access something. So Fraser, it could be how you're gonna log into your bank to transfer money to me, for example. Um, <laughs> So it, it, but what Trees does is it helps solve a really classic problem when it comes to providing that access journey. And the problem is I want to make it really easy for you to transfer money to me, but it also needs to be really secure. And those can be at odds with each other and they're changing over time. So what's considered secure is constantly changing. What's considered um, strong authentication or appropriate level of validation of context is changing. And also what's easy for you to do uh, for your, your login might be different than me, might be different than our parents. It's different based on what kind of device you're on, if you're on a phone versus an iPad versus a laptop. And so there's all these things that you have to consider as you design that perfect access journey. So for you logging in, you would never know it because it should feel like you don't even remember logging in. But for the architect on the back end, they're putting together so many pieces to make sure it's right. It's both secure and it's easy. It's incredibly hard to do. Um, what Trees does is make it easy. Um, instead of having to think about a big programming list of if Fraser's on this device at this time and this is happening, or it's a Tuesday, you know, there's this huge list <laughs> of linear logic that you have to code out. Um, right. We've gotten away with that. We have a graphical palette and you just drag together all of the different components and considerations uh, and put together the journey. And that's why it's been so popular is because it helps provide both secure uh, access journeys and really facilitates the ease of use that you need. Nice. And so for anyone who hasn't seen it, then uh, the name trees presumably comes from how it looks like a branching tree uh, when you create those journeys, right? That's exactly right. Instead of the linear process, you're now able to branch and loop. And so it does look like um, trees. Yeah. And at number two, self-service trees. Self-service trees, also uh, really popular. Um, and, and it's around that experience side. So in, in identity, there's an area that's commonly done very poorly, very clumsy. And it's at that point where an access journey intersects with identity management. Um, let me explain that in more detail. So an access journey is when you're logging in. Identity mm -hmm. management is things like, you think about self-service as something like, I forgot my username, I wanna reset my password, I wanna look at my preferences. Um, historically in identity, these are thought of and designed separately. And because they're thought of and designed separately, 
when they come together, it's clumsy. So if you're trying okay. to log into your bank account and you forgot your password and you want to reset it, it's been designed in two different places. So the odds are it's going to kick you off to a different tab or do something that's going to be frustrating to you. In fact, okay. it's, it's such a notoriously bad uh, situation that there's there's multiple studies on how horrible this experience is. Um, <laughs> so it's important to get it right, right? Like this is where you lose customers. If you were about yeah. to buy super important concert tickets and you lost your password in the middle of that authentication and your card got cleared, it's really frustrating and you'll abandon buying something. So mm. um, what the self-service trees does is in that same trees engine, you design all of it together to make sure that it's seamless and you can't lose the customer and it solves that chronically bad uh, you know, experience. And at number three, Forge Rock Go. This is about passwordless and usernameless logins. So it's a loginless experience. And <laughs> it's popular because, uh, because of how much people hate usernames and passwords. <laughs> um, Fraser, do you love usernames and passwords? <laughs> Are they your favorite? <laughs> I actually joked in the, the episode I did with uh, Ben and Frank that I just love having to remember dozens of different <laughs> passwords. It's it's great. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like they're the worst on so many angles. So not only is it a bad experience to have to type them in and remember them at different places or reset them, but it's really insecure. So the the credentials get transferred on the wire, they're subject to man in the middle attacks. People write them on post-it notes. You know, once someone sees your post-it note, they can log in as you. So they just, <laughs> they don't work well. And so mm. this idea of passwordless is so attractive because it elevates both the security. It's very strong authentication. It's using public private keys that can be stored in a trusted vault. They never leave the device. So they're not subject to the man in the middle attacks. It also elevates the experience. So you don't have to type in a password or even a username anymore. So it's been very popular. Yeah, it's nice. <laughs> and at number four, DevOps. DevOps uh, is interesting to me because it has nothing to do with identity or access management. Uh, it just has to do with how you install an identity and access management platform. So right. it's, it's surprising that it's in our top list, but it really isn't. And here's why. So identity, is so critical in a large enterprise. Every single business application needs identity. So it's the most critical application in some ways because every other most critical application needs it. Sure. If it goes down, you could literally go out of business. Um, so as you can imagine, an enterprise wants super tight control over that identity platform, how secure it is, um, how, the uptime, availability, all of the liability, they care a lot about that identity platform. And right. so DevOps has been important because up until this, what Fordrock has done with DevOps, an enterprise had two choices that weren't ideal. So one choice to have full control over identity, you would like drag a server, a bare metal server into a data center, stick a wire into it, install an operating system, then install the platform. It's very old school, it's time consuming, um, so your other option was, I'm going to uh, take a SaaS service, which is super simple. I don't have to install anything. I mm -hmm. can just consume it, but I've lost my control. It's rigid. It's limited. I don't have full control. And so those were right. two options. DevOps gave you uh, the best of both. So Fordrock's done all the work to make our product deployed in minutes in any cloud of your choice where you have full control over it. Um, you can upgrade it seamlessly. Um, so it's all the benefits of cloud and elastic, um, simple, automated, containerized, uh, but you don't have, um, you still have all of the control. So it's been really popular. All right, Mary. Well, that is a really good list. Uh, guys, do you agree with that list of uh, the top four drop features? Or is there another feature that you really love? Make sure to, to let us know. Um, Mary, we're, you're going to be joining me again for another episode for our Locals tour of the 4Drop platform, right? Yes, yes, I'm looking forward to it. Brilliant. All right, well, I will see you then. And guys, I'll see you next time. <laughs>